Trash man wouldn't get the trash today. All because he won for pay. Don't know about that. But the boom, 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 boom. But that's what makes the world go round. The up and down, the carousel. But that's what makes the world go round. The up and down, the care. People make the world go round. Yo. Ezekiel Elliott's world is going around and around. He's trying to figure out whether he's going to be playing or not. They're going to figure that out today, I think, at like five. The Fifth Circuit Court is going to give a judgment on whether Elliott is going to be playing. Now, I just had a sub. I think his name is, uh, let me see. I think he's a sub. I don't know if he's a sub or not. Anyway, he's a cool dude. Some damn it anyway. When you guys ask me, you know, to make videos on something, I like doing that because I know you're going to watch it, even if it's just that one person. I think that's awesome. Uh, Marvin, Brother Marvin, thanks for stopping by. Bro up with you. Bro up with Marvin. Okay, so it's Marvin. He comes down to court. He shoots. He's on fire. <laughs> Marvin's in the football. So it's Marvin to the 10, to the 20, to the 30. It's Marvin all the way to the 50 yard line. First down. Something like that. So, yes, yeah, so a judge, Judge Amos Mazant, is going to rule whether he's guilty or not. Now, just to let you guys know, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and Ezekiel Elliott is a hometown hero. You know what I'm saying? He um, led him to a championship game, I think. I don't know. I don't follow it. College ball, even though I've been asked to start following college ball. Uh, only so Mikey James can scream at me <laughs> when I have a wrong prediction on, on sports that I don't watch. It's like, Mike, I don't I don't watch sports. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's all fun because that's my dude. He's all right. Anyway, so he's a hometown dude. Ezekiel Elliott's a hometown dude. And what happened is he said that well, he didn't say. Tiffany Thompson, his girlfriend, uh, said that he hit her. He has three incidents uh, where he's hit he's hit her, and basically he was suspended for six games, but they're trying to overrule that. Now, I made a video about this before, and I was talking about how, uh, you know, when they, sus they suspend somebody for, you know, six games, and the money that's into that, then they can come back and appeal that, and they could possibly get, you know, two or three games played and, you know, still get fined maybe uh, three games, you know, or four games. And it kind of evens out. You know, Roger's happy. Ezekiel's somewhat happy because he's not losing all that money because he's getting paid by the games that he plays. And uh, uh, the courts are happy because, you know, they're getting the money, the lawyers are happy, so on and so forth. So it's kind of a medium plus Tiffany is somewhat happy because she's probably going to get money. But nonetheless, he, and, and the people who are watching uh, these sports are vindicated because they're like, no, we don't want uh, somebody who plays a violent sport to have domestic violence. You know, we don't want that. We don't want gladiators to kill people. Only in the ring. Only kill people in the ring. You know what I mean? Uh, you want somebody who runs 15 miles an hour into another person in order to knock them down not to have, and you're just like, that's no excuse. It's not an excuse, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, you know, it's, we we want violence, but we don't want violence, you know. And even even women, because there's domestic violence on women, too. There's women beating their husbands up all the time. And it's just like, you know, these women are, are, you know, they're into aggressive things, or they're watching aggressive sports. So what the correlation is, you know, when you have these aggressive sports and then people go out and do, who play these sports go out and do these aggressive things and or people who watch these aggressive sports go out and do aggressive things, it, there's a correlation there. There's there's something to that. It's like you should have more constraint. Well, then fine. However you sociologists and doctors want to get into that, I'm not one of you. What I'm just saying is, there's something to that. It's not an excuse, but there's definitely something to that. 
when, uh, you know, they had one football player was last year, year before last, uh, played for Kansas City. What he do? He killed his girlfriend. Then he went to the field, found his coach, and said, Coach, I thank you for everything that you've done for me. And he blew his head off. We, we don't think that has anything to do with him playing football. Dang. He would have done that if he was playing badminton. You know, he would have still done that. You know, people wake up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, these reports of these players, you know, uh, getting into these scuffles with whoever, not necessarily their woman, but getting into scuffles on the streets, uh, uh, whatever. You know, they. It, we have to understand that the more we want these players to be aggressive on the field, it doesn't stop on the field. The more of that aggression is going to spill over into their ordinary life. It just is. It's not an excuse. It's a fact. <laughs> They're going to be more aggressive in their life. The more uh, 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 amped up they get, the more we put these drugs and pump them up and tell them to run faster, hit harder, then we're paying them like they did in, uh, who were they paying? Deuce McAllister and those guys back in 09. And then they were like, yeah, they're paying us to to like put the smack down on Kristen Ponder or whoever, uh, whoever the quarterbacks are. They're paying us to smack these quarterbacks, you know, and the more damage we do to them, the more money we get. You guys don't think that spills over into somebody's ordinary nah it just it ends right on the field that's what it does they calm down as soon as they leave the gate that's what no so there needs to be some study on that i'm not that dude but i recognize that there is definitely a correlation nobody should be beating up their girlfriend and their girlfriends shouldn't be beating them up either uh ray rice you know <laughs> you know there, there shouldn't be none of that you know so i when i saw the Thing on Ray Rice, I didn't immediately get mad at Ray Rice. I was like, you're both at fault. No woman should be putting her hands on a man and no man should be putting his hands on a woman. Not unless you guys are just kinky and weird. Y'all need to go to some other part of the planet with that because we don't want to promote that. You know, I don't want to be hit by no woman and I don't want no woman hitting me. And that's just the facts, Jack, you know. So, but it's the way that they deal with these situations, you know. They either, sometimes they just sweep it up under the rug. It all depends on who it is. But Ezekiel is a big name. You know, he's new to the NFL. And he's a big name in the NFL. And, you know, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. You got a young upstart. This guy could take Dallas all the way. You know, he's a great player. His life cycle in the NFL is basically maybe three to five years. That's average, especially for a running back. They start trading them after three years. They're just like, hey, your knees are blown out. We're going to trade you. You know what I mean? It used to be trade them to the Raiders, but the Raiders are hella good now. But the way they deal with these players is I see it's an ever-changing system. It's not always, you hit a woman, you know, slap them with, you know, millions of dollars of fines, and then kick them out of the NFL you're no good for society. It's just like, yo, let's look at these cases. And I'm thinking that's happened because of what happened to Ray Rice when people actually looked at it and saw that elevator fiasco. What if Ray Rice would have got hit and never hit her back? You know, what if he would have never hit that woman back who actually he's married to now? What if he would have never done that? Would the world would have been in such an uproar? You know, what would have happened then? Oh, she hit him. Ha, ha, ha. No, I would have been livid. I'd have been like, yo, she just hit this man. You know what I'm saying? So I think people are starting to realize, look, just don't jump to one conclusion and let that be the reason. So I, I, I really believe that they're going to show leniency in this case. However, uh, well, for one, he said he didn't do it. Now, I don't know if they have videotape or anything or whether he did or didn't do it, but he said he didn't do it. She's saying he did. You're penalizing a man on allegations that you don't know is true. It Like, like this stuff, like you're a target when you go into the NFL. So anybody can just jump up and say, hey, this man did this. 
find him, give me a million dollars. Like, no, we don't know if it happened or not. Now, if they prove that it did happen, and he's like, yeah, it happened, which he didn't. He said, I didn't do this. I say there needs to be, of course, a criminal investigation into it because, it, you know, it is a felony. And, and we need to not only just look at him, we need to look at this woman and be like, you know, are you lying or not? Because if this man loses millions of dollars and is brought up on charges, l loses time at, at, on his job, we're finding you for it. Not only that, you know, you're, we can get you for all kind of criminal stuff when people make false allegations to somebody. We're coming after you. We're going in your pockets. All the money you make, your parents, somebody, we're garnishing your wages until you pay this man back all his lawyer fees and all the money that he has now lost. You know, that's the way I'm looking at it. Go after these people, whether man or woman, who are making these false claims, if it is false. But if he did do it, they should find him. They should, you damn right they should find him. Uh, they should take away some of his money. He should feel that because you shouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? So if she's wrong and she did wrong, they should go after her. If he's wrong and he did wrong, they should go after him. But they should not kick him out of the NFL, which is not even what they're talking about. And I think finding the man, uh, for one, you know, paying a girl, whatever, you know, she's due if he's in the wrong. And give it, see, I don't think you should do both. I think if money has to come out of his pocket for his lawyers and and then he has to pay her, I think pay her, let that man go right back to what he's doing. That's the, I'm sorry, that's the way I'm looking at it. You ladies might not like it, but I bet you like it if you were driving a beat up Jetta and now, you know, your whole family is taken care of. So that's what I'm saying. Give that woman her money. Okay, fine. You know, pay her a million and a half or whatever. And let that man go right back to what he's doing. Some of you want to cut the doggone guy's penis off. You know, no, put him in jail for 50 years. Pay the woman $20 million and let him never play. No, I'm not doing that. This is not a tiki torch witch hunt. It's your boy Tone 202, and that's just the way I feel about it. I am out of here.